What's going on guys, Dan Watson. I've got the legendary GH5 right here. And I've actually had this thing for quite a while, but I've been too busy shooting with it to actually finish my review on it. So here you go. Here it is after long overdue. The good thing is by now I have tons of time with this camera. I mean, when this thing came out, it was just legendary to me. The, the kind of specs that you had in this kind of camera, you just couldn't get for under $8,000 in a normal video camera. And here it was, Panasonic was putting this out in a $2,000 camera that seemed to work very well. And so I had to pick up this camera and start shooting with it. Now I ended up purchasing this camera as a wedding filmmaker, and this is now my driving camera for all my video work. So, I mean, this camera has so many features, it would take me hours to do this review if I was focused on all of them. So we're gonna kind of narrow it down to the things that I use the most, and I think they're the most applicable to people who are shooting in various situations that are kind of similar to mine. I also use this for YouTube and other projects that I've been working on. So this is a main driving camera for me, and I've been shooting with various cameras for a long time. I would have to say my main shooters have been Canon for video work. Uh, I have been using Panasonic and Sony as well, especially when I need a 4K, but those were my driving cameras. And now I have the Panasonic GH5, and I actually switched systems to get it. So let's take a look at this camera and all the things that I had to offer to get me to switch from Canon to Panasonic for all of my video work. Now I did review the initial GH4 when that first came out. I did a couple videos with that and I did try and use it for a couple weddings as well. And while it did shoot 4K, it just wasn't great in low light and there were a couple other things that kind of held it back from the competition and made it not my driving camera. However, all that has changed now. I am a huge believer in 4K, and so having that option has always been great. I do shoot in 4K, I almost never deliver in 4K for anything except YouTube. However, it allows me to recompose in post. It allows me to crop in when I need it, to punch in and get some nice, more detailed shots and stabilize. And it gives me so many options to work with my footage in post, and so I love shooting with it. Not to mention, we are shooting now on a new 20 megapixel sensor. Uh, this sensor is now being recorded, the entire sensor on the previous GH4 that was actually a 2.3x crop. So basically this is using 15% larger area of the sensor to record video and because of that, much better performance on that. We're oversampling from a 20 megapixel sensor and no low pass filter, which is kind of all working together to give us much better results than we were used to before. On the GH5 now, I am comfortable using this camera 3200 ISO, which is at least a stop better than I was used to on the GH4. At 6400 ISO, there's a pretty noticeable quality loss. I would say that the amount of grain in there kind of keeps things a little bit distracting. You can use it, but 3200 ISO is a better safe place to start. And while that might not sound impressive to a lot of people, especially you A7, S2 shooters out there. This is good enough for my kind of work, good enough for most people, paired with some wide aperture prime lenses, some wide aperture zoom lenses, and then also the option of going speed boosters with some Canon glass is really the complete package to make this thing decent in light like that. Now the first big major standout feature to me was being able to record 4K at 60 frames per second, which is just astonishing on a camera like this. I record 4K a lot, and if you're ever shooting weddings, you know that sometimes moments happen that are just like two, three seconds long, and it's really difficult to integrate such a short clip into your wedding film. And when you're shooting at 60 frames per second, it means that I can take that clip and extend it out in post and make it a five, six second long clip, and that clip is now really easy to integrate, and some moments just look better in slow motion. So I love shooting at 4K, 60 frames per second. I do it for a lot of the details. I do it for the intro and when they're exiting as well. There's just so many really cool shots that you're able to get with this, and it's absolutely astonishing that we're able to get it in the GH5. We also have undercranking and overcranking. We can actually go all the way to 180 frames per second in 1080p, and that's some breathtakingly awesome slow motion on that one. The downside is that you don't get autofocus and you also don't have any audio being recorded. So if you wanna put things in with autofocus and with audio recording, you're gonna to need to step it down to 1080p. You're only gonna get 60 frames per second, which is a little unfortunate because uh, you can record 4K at 60 frames per second, so there's not much of a reason to go to 1080p. I was hoping that in 1080p we might get 120p, but you can't. So basically, if you wanna record that slow motion, you're gonna lose those features, and if you don't wanna record that slow motion and you just wanna be able to do it in post, then you're gonna be able to get up to 4K at 60 frames per second. 
There was a little bit of quality loss when I was shooting at 180 frames per second, so just keep that in mind. It was still very, very good, but just not as clean, not as detailed as we were getting in the other settings. And then also a big improvement has now been rolling shutter, which is really almost unnoticeable in most of my general shooting. You really have to crank this camera in order to see it. And so all of a sudden, this opens up the door for just a lot more handheld work and uh, some other types of shots and panning shots that really didn't look so good on other cameras, but really looks pretty good on the GH5. So the last major feature that made this camera an instant buy for me was unlimited recording. The, for some stupid reason, we are still dealing with 29 minute record times on virtually every DSLR and mirrorless camera that's not a dedicated video camera. So for the first time, we have a camera like this that is so small in your hand that can record unlimited. Not only that, these are two card slots, they're, they're actually UHS-2, both of them, by the way, which is absolutely unbelievable. And then these card slots can be used in redundancy for recording backups to the other card. You can also record to one and have it automatically go to the other card when it is full. And if you do that, these cards are actually hot swappable, which you will not find in a camera like this. So you can just pop out one card when it's full, put in a brand new card, and just keep recording on that as long as you want. Now this camera is not USB powered. You cannot power this via USB, so you're gonna have to get an AC adapter if you wanna go long times with that. Without a doubt, this made the GH5 really one of the best cameras for me, but this is not, we're not done with anything yet. Panasonic has thrown in a ton more features into this little tiny camera. Let's talk about this camera body for a minute. Ergonomics wise, this is probably the most unbelievable body that you're gonna get in these small type cameras. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. It has all the customization that you could possibly want on this. It's actually good to, to 14 degrees. Plenty of freeze proof and dust proof and waterproof weather sealing on this body. It has all the ports and everything that you would need on it. You have a full size HDMI port now, USB-C 3.0. You've moved the mic input to another location, which kind of clears it when you're articulating your screen. Speaking of this articulating screen is super high resolution, really easy to see. Uh, touch screen has all the features that I want. Plus you have this really amazing viewfinder now that's great in bright light. You can always use it and it has up the resolution as well. Now the battery is the same battery from the Panasonic GH4. Uh, I find that I go through about three batteries in an average wedding. It is just as powerful as before, but because of some new features, I actually found that it lasted less than before, which is fine. One of those new features is actually the image stabilization system, which is really, really nice. I'm gonna put it somewhere between the OK image stabilization system and the A7S II and the amazing system in Olympus's camera. So somewhere right in between is where the Panasonic seemed to land, but it was actually really good for handheld work. It made a huge difference. You can now use this thing handheld with some really nice prime lenses and get some amazing shots. On the connectivity side, we have Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth 4.2 low energy, which is great if you wanna have your photos downloaded in real time to your phone. And speaking of that phone, Panasonic probably makes the best app that I have ever used for your mobile recording. I'm using it right now to record the Panasonic G7, and this thing is allowing me to focus. I can control all my manual options straight from the phone. It is absolutely an amazing app and really, really nice for controlling things remotely. There are also these little gems, and my favorite is gonna be the rack focus system. We can actually pick any up to three different points and the camera will rack focus from one to the other and you basically just select the speed that you want and it's really, really nice for getting a nice smooth rack focus and even with these lenses right here that are electronic, it's really difficult to get a nice rack focus with that without using some manual lenses and so if you have lenses like this, it's a great way to get that nice smooth focus transition between one focus point and the other. I'm also a huge fan of the extra teleconverter option that you have on this camera. I mean, this thing is awesome. With virtually no quality loss, you can get an additional 1.4x crop in the 4K mode and an additional 2.7x crop in 1080p, and it gives you some a, a lot of extra reach out of those lenses. But this camera is not perfect, and one of the biggest weaknesses is gonna be the continuous autofocus system in video. It's just simply not good enough to be able to use for anything professional. And this is a good thing because most filmmakers probably don't need this feature. And for the ones that are using it kind of casually, it works good enough with some tweaking to get by. However, I have found that I can actually use Canon's or Sony's new autofocus systems, the dual pixel for Canon, in professional environments and have it track extremely reliably. I could be using it right now and it would keep on me the entire time filming. I would feel very confident about that. Those systems are great for tracking brides coming down the aisle. 
I can't do it with this camera. This is gonna be manual focus only for that. It's very good for single point there to there, but when you're trying to track people and using it in continuous, it's just not there. Another downside is that log recording is still a $100 add-on. You have to purchase it, wait for it to ship, it has to arrive, you have to, and it's all just an unlock code. So that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for me. They did have some issues initially with being backordered as well, but it's kind of unfortunate in a camera like this, we have to pay for that feature. That said, I'm a little not as upset because it's a feature that I actually don't use, but if you do use it, it's really nice on this camera because one thing you do have is 10-bit, 422, 4K, 30 frames per second in camera. So if you're a log shooter, that's gonna be amazing. Or if you're shooting on green screen as well, that'll be a big help. Really awesome to have that internally in camera. You can actually get a little better than that if you go externally to a recorder, but that is amazing to see on a camera like this. On the photo side, things have improved as well. It's, this is not a camera that's really known for its photo abilities just because its video features are so unbelievable. But on the photo side, things have improved as well. You have 12 frames per second shooting, an 8,000th of a second shutter speed, which is like pro end right there. You can flash sync at a 250th of a second. Really some nice features and then also, we have that 6K photo mode and 4K photo mode, and the 4K photo mode was there before, but now we can pull 4K photos, that's about an eight megapixel JPEG, at 60 frames per second, which is insane. And if you want that 6K photo, you can actually go to 30 frames per second on that, which is really, really nice if you're shooting a long sequence and you wanna be able to pull a photo from it. You also have photo stacking, so you can basically take a photo, it takes it at 30 frames per second, it focuses at every point along that and you can choose the areas that you want in focus or if you want everything in focus after the fact. Really cool, unbelievable technology and it's really kind of exploiting the use of mirrorless technology and it's nice to see features like that in cameras like this. The focus system for photos is pretty nice. 225 points, it's contrast only detection, no phase detection at all. I actually thought that for photos it would be a little bit worse than it was. It's pretty good at tracking, and for single point, it's actually really, really quick at moving back and forth. For tracking, it's okay. It's only when we get into video where it's live tracking that it really begins to search and kind of pick the wrong objects. But as long as your subject is really clear and in contrast, it's pretty good about locking them and tracking them as they move towards the camera. The Panasonic GH5, to me, is really what an upgrade should look like. It, it really took the features that it had, it threw a ton more in it. It's like Panasonic went all out on this camera. It threw things in this camera that most people thought they would not be able to deliver on. And it really kind of future-proofed itself. Panasonic has also announced that there are updates coming out to support other video modes and compressions and other things like that. And we can really see that Panasonic is committing to not only this camera as it is right now, but the future of it. And with future proof things like UHS-2 and USB 3.0 Type-C ports, we can really see that Panasonic didn't think of this as a camera of old, but is really trying to push this to the next level. I mean, this camera has really been able to change the way that I shoot for weddings, giving me features like 4K 60 frames per second, super slow motion, limited recording. I mean, all these things were really game changers for me. If you can live within that low light ability of a micro four thirds sensor, and also you don't mind using some wide aperture primes or speed boosters, if you ever need shallow, shallow depth of field, you're gonna love this camera. It is really insane, the features that you're gonna get out of it. And I can't wait to see what Panasonic does next with this thing via firmware updates. It's really only the beginning. It, this is just, it simply is one of the best cameras that I've ever used. And it's a camera that goes with me pretty much everywhere and can be used for almost every project from super professional projects all the way down to YouTube videos and vlogs and stuff like that. And I've seen it used for both. And so overall, this is really an amazing camera. You should definitely consider picking it up. At under $2,000 and there's some deals going on right now, it's really, there's nothing even close to this level of quality and features that you can get in a camera like this. So thanks for watching. I've got a links below. You can check out some other videos on the Panasonic GH5. Subscribe, we have a lot of those coming up too. Really appreciate it, you guys. Stay tuned, so much more fun stuff to come. Can't wait.